Why hello there, a proper sit down video, what is going on? When I was displaying in Manchester and I felt the rush of like, oh, I wanna buy some Lego. And because this is like the only modern modular that I didn't have, I kind of got swept away and decided to purchase it. Um, however, I have many things to say about this modular. Before I do, I want to put a tiny little bit of a disclaimer in front of this video, which is, uh, these are my opinions. I have opinions because I have certain aesthetics that I like, therefore my opinions are neither like true nor false, they are just my opinions. Um, so please take it all with a grain of salt. If you love this modular, like, awesome, there is various things that I don't love about it and I would just really like to talk about it. Yeah, that's basically it. Please don't be offended. I don't mean to offend, I just mean to share my opinion with you because I would like to talk about it. Now, that being said, you probably know that it's gonna be not the best review. I was live when this module got leaked and I genuinely thought that this was a joke. I thought this was just a mock or something. I did not believe for a little while that this was genuinely what it was gonna look like. I think, looking back at it now, realistically that opinion was mostly coming from the colour scheme. Um, when you first look at this modular, it's incredibly striking, it has a very interesting colour scheme and it's a very divisive colour scheme. But when I realised it was true and this was the real modular, as I kept looking I kept finding things that was like, but that seems so odd. I think it's always struck me as a non-cohesive modular. Um, my city is also quite um, sort of antique ornate and this is much more like a sort of in my head, it feels slightly more like American in some ways. It has a different architectural style to what I kind of have mostly in my city or the mocks that I've chosen to do. So this kind of was outside of that. Why would I spend my money on it if I don't like it? Like, that seems like a waste of money. It's, it's not cheap. Um, the reason I cave in Manchester is I think you kind of like in this buzz at a convention, you kind of get this like, oh, I want to build something, I want to buy something, it's really fun. So I think I just kind of got swept away. And I had been playing with this module in studio as well as like talking to Alberto because he did like a mock for it where you could add like a little balcony thing, making it more like New Orleans style. And I've been really curious about that for ages anyway. Playing around with the module has always been kind of appealing to me because I thought maybe if I change the colour scheme of it, it could look really cool. Does it fit in my city? That was something that I still had to figure out. So when I was kind of swept away by this like, oh, I'd love to purchase something vibe, I ended up caving and I bought this because it was on sale for 175 rather than 200 pounds, which I thought was low enough. And generally I found like when you buy Lego sets, when you build them in person, they always tend to feel like more detailed, they're just nicer in person. That's been my experience with loads of them and that's what I was hoping this would be as well. Now, when I started building this, uh, it wasn't after a great start, I have to be honest. The floor colour schemes in the bottom level of this build is really not to my liking. There is just something about the combination of dark tan and dark bluish grey that feels so muddy to me. Um, and then also the main like building, the jazz clip itself, has like a tan and dark tan colour scheme, which again felt quite murky, I didn't really like. Also, as I was building the ground floor, like there was just I was just waiting for an interesting technique or something interesting and I really felt it was very lacking in that. I, I didn't like the colour scheme, I felt like I was just basically building some walls just by stacking bricks. Like nothing was really blowing me away. The only thing that I really did like about the bottom floor was the pizza oven. I thought the part used for that was really nice. I thought the effect was really good. It looked really pretty when it was done. But that's like one really small build out of an entire floor, which left me pretty underwhelmed. As I went up floors, I have to say it, it did improve a little bit. Unlike some other builds with Lego, I felt like it improved over time. It started really basic and it continued to get a bit more interesting per floor. But that doesn't mean it got fun, <laughs> I have to say. I just built this because I felt like I had to, but as I was building it, there was more and more things that I was coming across. I was like, oh, I don't really like this. Oh, this color is not great. This is this. And the list of things that I wanted to change to make it more my style became so big that I was like, I feel like I'm just now planning on replacing pretty much every color. Definitely the bright light yellow, definitely the dark red, definitely these reddish brown tiles, maybe the purple door. This build, as I was going, just felt so disjointed. I think the effect, if you were to just make this build completely white, I think the actual details in it are really nice. I just feel like the color choices that they made in this build were completely 
utterly random. They don't feel like they are joining up together, they don't feel like they are complementing each other, they don't feel like they are working towards one cohesive, they are just so random. Not only is the blue bottom and the dark red top quite a statement, the reddish brown detailing a bit odd, but like, why is that the purple door? Why did it have to be purple? It's just so strange in combination with everything else. I think my problem with this build is that there's so much here that it's just crying for your attention that you don't really know where to look first. I always find like generally buildings and, and buildings that feel balanced tend to have a, a way of drawing the eye around the building so you can kind of see everything and take it all in. Sometimes it's opulence, so it's harder to take everything in because there's so much detail, but at least then generally colour schemes work together or the colour schemes are more muted. That's kind of the type of architecture I like. It's kind of similar, I feel like, with the boutique hotel. Like, that has different colours in it. They work in harmony together. Like, there is there's something about that works. Like, medium nougat and nougat, like, work together. Like, the medium nougat is the first colour you look at, and, and then the one above it is just more muted, but it still kind of blends in. And then, like, the sand green roof is, like, still a muted colour, so that complements it and there's lots of white. This is just so bright and there's just so many colours. Just on this facade alone, we have the bright light orange, we have black detailing, we have the bright, I don't know what this colour blue is called, but it's very blue. Then there was the dark red, which is very bold, and I love dark red, which is why I'm so surprised. Then you've got the reddish brown detailing, you've got all this light bluish grey and dark bluish grey detailing. There is just so much going on. And you're like, where, where do I need to look first? I think there was an attempt made to tie some of the colours more into it, so there's like a little bright light orange flower there and there to kind of bring it together. But then they have used flowers here in front of the pizzeria, which are a different colour purple to like the purple detailing down there. The bright light yellow is so bright! Why choose that colour in combination with everything else? It just feels like every single part of this build is screaming at me for attention, but I don't know where to look first because like everything needs my attention. And it's just really overwhelming. It's too much. It's just too much. But then the opposite problem happens inside. The inside feels completely disjointed. So if you take this apart a minute, the bottom floor, in my opinion, is really very random, but also very basic. Now, I think the pizzeria interior is okay. I like it. It has sort of the things that you expect. We're overlooking the bright light yellow here because we've already touched on that, but the actual interior is all right. I don't know why the counter is tan. Again, that seems like a different colour to introduce. I don't know why we're not just getting a different colour that can just tie in with everything else, but whatever. Like, that is fine. We have a tan counter with a light bluish grey top. I guess that's stone. We'll go with it. But the pizzeria is open to the jazz club, which straight away makes me go, that seems really in inconvenient. It takes away from the intimacy of the jazz club, it makes no sense to the pizzeria itself. From a busy, loud restaurant right next to a jazz club, I would have expected, and from looking at the exterior of this building as well, for that to have been a closed wall. Which in my opinion would make way more sense, because then at least you can have a way of having two separate buildings. I think that would work better. I think the stage in the jazz club itself is nice, like it's okay. The most interesting bit of that technique was probably just adding the little curtains and the blight bar above it, that was like quite nicely done. It wasn't the most secure, but it was secure enough. It's nice that it's an angle, but the colours inside just don't feel cosy to me. I really wish that there would have been more like posters maybe of jazz bands or like maybe just a pattern in the wall. Now it is like this block of dark orange, like where has this dark orange come from? It just feels very basic and it wasn't interesting to build and introducing another really bold colour next to all the other bold colours that we already have on the exterior that you can see from the front is a bit odd. Like I don't need all this dark orange. Um, from a parts pack perspective, eh, interesting, you know, dark orange is a nice colour but it just didn't feel like it belonged in the set when you're building it. I would have much rather have seen maybe having the, bl the blue from the facade complemented by a dark blue back instead, so it would feel a bit darker, a bit more intimate, um, and the blue would have kind of had a theme, so the blue would have continued on. It's just all screaming for attention, and the colour choices don't seem deliberate, and this is probably the theme of this whole thing. 
The build for the angled door was interesting, though not mind-blowing in my opinion. It was smart enough, but it didn't feel as sturdy as some of the other stuff. It was fine once it's part of it, but it's, as you can see, kind of moves. It's not the sturdiest thing I've ever built. It's actually not attached to it that much, but it's okay. It's like, eh. I feel like if everything else had been more interesting, that would have been a really nice addition. Had the level of the build been similar to that door, then it would have been an enjoyable build. That was like, oh, this is a bit different, this is kind of interesting. However, then we have, like, in order, I suppose, to tie a dark orange in a little bit from the back wall, in front of this, like, live music entryway, we have a dark red and dark orange tiles, which together don't work, in my opinion, because they're both the wall colours, um, and tying them back into, like, the sort of tiling in front makes no sense. I would have kind of gone for maybe just the same colour as the pavement, so it's a bit, like, the... the attention that you have is on the actual facade, not on the floor. They are competing with the facade, which is already bright enough as it is. I would have muted that down quite a lot. Now then, having had a relatively underwhelming experience with the bottom floor, um, which I honestly just thought was very lacking. By the way, this, this little seating area here, you add at the very end, I think it's very lackluster. It feels like somebody has just had a last minute decision, oh wait, we should have a place for people to sit in a pizzeria and then they just ploinked one table on the pavement. At least do two, so it feels like a sensible choice. Anyway, I have quite a lot of problems with this floor. Then going up, we have this first floor. On this floor I had slightly more fun building. There was more interesting builds. Maybe cohesively I didn't like it, but at least they were more interesting. So I really enjoyed the desk build. I thought that was very clever. I thought it was quite funny that there was like a balcony. It's like open to the club below. So there is like a the railing and you can see down to onto the stage from the first floor. However, it's a desk area. It's not a seating area, which I think is odd. The desk area is like fine. I guess the manager lives there, but also like why is that there? If, if it's open to the stage below, surely that would have made sense to be like another seating area where people can go. But then the downside is, in order to actually get to this floor, you have to go through the purple door on the side of this building at the ground floor, which insinuated that's just a stairs to the tailors. But it's not just a stairs to the tailors, it's actually just a stairs to the whole first floor. In order to use any of the rooms in this building above ground floor, you have to take the stairs, which are through the tailor's door, um, the really ugly purple door. And then we've obviously now established that like the medium lavender purplish colour is the tailor's colour. But apart from the doors and the sign, that's it. The actual tailor's apartment has nothing of that colour in it. I would have at least expected maybe a rug in that colour. Maybe he was sewing that colour. Maybe there was that colour on the, like, cloth wheel. No, that colour stops with the door. There's no more medium lavender in the whole tailor's apartment, which in my opinion is weird if you go to the length of changing the door colour to establish that that's the tailor's office. At least that could have been a bigger sign inside. Something should have tied the medium lavender into the tailor's office in order to make that a piece of story. It just feels like, oh, we need like a differentiation. Oh, uh, let's just use this really bright colour. That makes no sense. I just don't like it. The other odd choice that I'm like, Actually, two more. The other odd choice that I think is not needed, but like, it felt like, oh, this is a fun technique, I want to chuck it in here, is the stained glass windows um, for the red building. Look, the windows are a really fun build, I grant you that. The building of the windows is beautiful. I think it looks really smart. I think that was like a fun detailing to add. Um, it brings some interest to the building techniques for this build. However, why are the, why are the windows stained glass? because you can't really see that colour if the building is built, but also the stained glass doesn't really come back in any other way into the building. The colours that they use for the stained glass feel so random. Again, the continued issue of like, why is this this colour? And if this is like an art thing that we're adding, maybe make it obvious, maybe tie it back into little detailing, maybe have that artwork on this floor, on the wall. Maybe make the colours in the artwork the same colours as in a stained glass window, just solid just tie those colours back in, why are they being abandoned? Um, it just feels like the colours were chosen without thought. It just doesn't feel like a adhesive story that I'm looking at, and that's really frustrating for me. The um, wall for the front facade of this unit here is medium nuka, which 
to me was like, but why? I know that like the pizza oven that you build on the side here, I'll show you quickly. This is medium nougat. Okay, but like it's a brick built oven, it goes from the oven below, it ties back up to a chimney. I can see that. Okay, fine. But then without using any kind of masonry details, the front like wall here, which actually is quite hidden from the front, is all medium nougat, adding another <laughs> random color to this building. I would have said maybe make that white or in a very least just make it like bright light yellow like everything else in this building. Um, why does that have to be medium nougat? It feels so random. It also feels random inside so it's not even for the purpose of making the inside feel more cozy. It's just very odd to me. The actual build against that wall though, the um, like n n sewing machine, is really nice. <laughs> I have to say that. That was probably my favourite build of this whole set. The sewing table you build upside down, it's very detailed. I love the way it looks. It's honestly beautiful. So that is one big positive about this. Though it's, it feels really empty and it feels soulless. Yeah, it should have felt more more like, ooh, costume paradise-y, but it doesn't feel like that. However, I still think <laughs> overall, it's still my favorite room just because the builds tell a story together and they are kind of fun builds. They're kind of creative. Um, I just really wish that that wasn't the best room because there's so many other rooms that should have had more attention in my opinion but at least the colors there i think because like the stand where the fabric is on and the desk that the sewing machine is on are both reddish brown at least they're feeling like they're part of the same room on purpose that's really the main thing then the stairs continue upwards to the third floor well second floor depending on what country you're in and then there is an interesting ish sofa build but the sofa is like bright yellow with dark blue pillows. The yellow, I can live with because the yellow actually can tie back into the window. That's fine. But then the surround is all medium nougat and then the, the glamour table there as well, the dressing room table is also medium nougat. But it feels like a very basic, boring like dressing table that doesn't really have any kind of shine to it. Um, the mirror is just a metallic 2x4 piece and We've had literal modulars with like an actual mirror inside, <clears throat> assembly square. And this just felt like, it doesn't even reflect. It just feels really weird. I don't like it at all. Also the rest of the room is really bare. It needed like some sort of rug or something. Again, to help bring the colors in, to make it more suitable. There's a random box with nothing in. I'm assuming maybe if you put your magician in here, you could put like a something in there, but I don't know why it's there. You can tell that I'm starting to be like, there are so many things that I want to talk about here that don't work for me, that I don't really even know what to focus on, really. And that's, I think that's very telling of this build. Like, they don't know what they want to focus on either. And then we have this roof. Now, just, just remember a minute. The pizzeria is in this bottom floor, but the only way that you can get to the top floor is to go out of the pizzeria, through the purple door, and up through the dark red building. That's the only way this, this top floor here is accessible. But then there is an interesting um, like glass house, which feels like a nice thought, but very unpolished. I don't, there is no like finishing piece at the top here. It doesn't really close perfectly at the back. I liked the tomato plant build. That was kind of sweet. Um, I like that they try to do something different um, inside for how the vegetables are and kind of have raised beds. I thought that was nice. That was good detail but the actual roof and the glass house build feel like it's like 60% there. You have a really good idea of what you want to do here. Fun. Don't know why we needed it, but okay, you're going with a glass house here. Now make it more polished. Make it more detailed. Make it feel like when I build it, like go, oh, hmm, this is very interesting. I wouldn't have been able to think of this myself. Um, but I, instead I look at it and go, I want to make it better because it doesn't work. It's too much, in my opinion. It doesn't need to be there because it's another colour and another attention grabbing thing on this building. But if you do have it there, make it polished, make it finished, make it just nice. Then the detailing that we add to the front of this facade is like, okay, nice. We're adding some like flowers. That's, that's cute. They're, they're sort of like a nice-ish addition because it kind of needed some colour. But it's just, again, we don't have this colour of flower anywhere else in this build. Just, or in the very, very, very least, they could have made those medium lavender, like the door and like the tailor sign, because they had the flowers that are in front of the tailor's room. So then at least there would have been the same color purple. But no, it's a different color purple. <laughs> and um, 
it's frustrating to me. Also, excuse me if I'm saying the wrong colour names because I feel like I am. I'm getting my purples mixed up, I think. Anyway, the one, the most interesting floor that I found that we had to build was the final floor, this top floor of the jazz club, because actually the techniques used, though I don't love the colour use of this roof, were really fun and very effective and very smooth. And I think this is a fun build. I think the effect that it gives is really good and it's my it's the best floor in my opinion so yeah that's kind of my ranty review of it i think i'm just disappointed and and it's silly because i was already disappointed and i had already determined this modular was not really for me um and i bought it anyway because i was just kind of counting on the fact that every single lego set i've bought has always been better in person but it turns out if you don't like something already in the pictures, you're probably not going to like it in person either. Sadly, there was no amazing building techniques to blow my mind. I do like this sign. I think it's a nice sign. I just don't think it works with this building. I just really, really think that this building needs a rethink. It needs a new colour scheme because at the moment every single bit of this build is screaming for my attention and I don't know how to bestow it and it's overwhelming and it's not going in my city. It's really bad. I think this is the first time I've genuinely not liked a Lego set. As you know, like I don't buy everything so it's the chances of me not liking something are quite low because I tend to only buy it if I really like it. So yeah, the fact that I bought this anyway, I think I just... The problem I had with this is I really want to like it. I really want to be like, actually it's quite good in person. I just was really hoping that I had redeemable qualities and it just doesn't to me. Yeah, it's sad. That's everything I have to say about this build. Thank you so much for listening to me ramble on. Um, if you have this set and you've used it um, and made it your own by like mocking it or adding things, please like tag me in pictures on Instagram. I would really love to see it's at Heidi Toys. Um, because I'm really curious how people have been using the set. It's been very quiet since it's come out. I think usually you see people make mocks much more when modulars come out. Um, but this one will have us quite quiet and it didn't really get used as much. Um, I'm sure that there must be people out there that are really passionately loving this building. I kind of wish I could, if I'm really honest with you, but I just can't. And there is my opinion. Thank you for coming to my TED Talk. I will see you in the next one. Goodbye!